Thank you for staying with us. It's time for our first hot topic and this day we'll be talking about Sarah suing INEC over failure to prosecute electoral offenders. So we know that um, the off-cycle elections just happened recently and Sarah now is saying that there are certain electoral offenders that INEC hasn't prosecute, prosecuted yet. And so um, joining us to talk about this is Kola Wale, who is the... Um, the main person in Sarah that we like to talk to, <laughs> Kola Wale Oluwadari, Deputy Director of Sarah. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. You know, you're, you're our main guy in Sarah. <laughs> for the conversations that we have, we like to speak to you because you give it to us straight. So, um, getting right into it, there are certain offenders and INEC is yet to prosecute them. So why is Sarah suing at this point? Just give us a brief overview so we can understand what's going on. Thank you very much. Unfortunately, this is one of those things that, again, ends up as a public interest litigation, and it shouldn't. Uh, this is predicated on the recently complete, so reset, actually, uh, of cycle elections in three states. That is uh, Kogi, Baelza, and Imo states. And the various reports, and some of them are credible from credible sources, but okay, we'll call them reported because they have not been established before in court of law. The reported acts of electoral malpractice, including violence, ballot snatching, and vote buying. And naturally, what I next should do is to prosecute people that have been uh, found culpable of these actions. This is situated within the context of what, of what we've seen in this country. The integrity of our democracy is at stake. And more importantly, the integrity of INEC as a key player in the electoral process is at stake. So we wrote to INEC asking INEC uh, to carry out this strategy for them and not got that request that we made. And uh, because we did not get a response from INEC, we have come to court. And basically, the reliefs, the prayers that our lawyers are asking the court is simply to compel INEC to do what the law says it should do. And so uh, the question which I think the Nigerians should be asking is that, is INEC saying there were no electoral malpractice in these three elections? Or is INEC saying that those things that were called, that some of them were captured on camera, that were called in the, in the elections in these states, that are not electoral offenses at all? Is INEC saying it doesn't have the capacity to prosecute them? It is also against the background that the Electoral Act gives INEC the statutory powers to prosecute electoral offenses. <laughs> The law says clearly that it is the legal practitioners in the legal department of INEC that will do the prosecution. Of course, this doesn't take away the right of other law agents to prosecute people mm. for electoral offenses. But squarely, this falls within the consumer mandate of, of INEC. Hmm. Because I was also going to say that shouldn't that be for um, our police, you know, to prosecute them? And maybe as things are happening, um, when these reports are happening, they just get to arrest or prosecute them. But, you know, I, I understand what Sarah is saying. Make sure that these people are being prosecuted. So now, how would you want INEC to go about this? And what's, what can INEC do to ensure that this doesn't INEC even happen again? Can you hear me? So, to okay. look at the Electoral Act, uh, Section 145, and I'm, and I'm very sure that the intention of those who have put this section in the Electoral Act is also to empower INEC, perhaps from the things that have happened historically in our elections. Section 145 says that the prosecution on that of offenses under the Electoral Act shall be undertaken by INEC or a legal practitioner appointed by INEC. So we clearly understand that this is prosecution. But of course, there is the arrest and the investigation aspect of things, which is why INEC should be able to liaise with the law enforcement agencies who were on the ground during the elections for uh, the investigative side of things, and then INEC can do the prosecution. But we are yet to hear of anyone that has been charged to court or been prosecuted by INEC. Again, if we have not seen any report of a police charge that anyone to court to, or if there are instances where the police have charged anyone to court, that doesn't remove the responsibility of INEC. And say so they just include them in the electoral process. Hmm. to ensure that these individuals are prosecuted. So this is not far-fetched. INEX credibility is at stake. And what I affects INEX credibility and effectiveness impugns on, on the electoral process itself. From the things we've seen from the last elections and from the previous elections that INEC has conducted. So it is it, it, it is in the interest of INEC in, in buying public uh, uh, that credibility 
mm. to ensure that it is not only it doesn't only take the steps, but it is seen it's taking the steps to ensure that this does not happen again. It is not enough to for everyone to complain about the things that have happened and closet no. Individuals who have been found culpable should be prosecuted, and the people will see. And that will also mean that in the forthcoming elections, whether they are outside elections or the general elections, it will deter a lot of people from going to this process. Of that prosecutory power behind it. So there may be political, uh, there may be members of political parties or even those in government. Oh, and may find culpable in the investigative process, which should also be made to federal law. We can't continue to complain, mm -hmm. and we have institutions of government that have been statutorily empowered. It will be financially empowered to do these things, and they need to do nothing. It, it is just not right. Okay, and it so, won't so, in the long run. so does Sarap have any evidence, to, because you're saying you've not heard of anyone who has been um, prosecuted yet. I'm sure with your investigations, does Sarap have anyone um, who they can say for sure as, as an evidence that, you know, this person did this and so therefore we expect that this person should be prosecuted? Because you're saying you've not heard of anyone being prosecuted, but then what if we don't, there's no evidence? And you know how our system works, our legal system works, that says when there's no evidence, sorry, that's it. I thought you were referring to no evidence. You go explain tire. <laughs> I was about to <laughs> say that. <laughs> <laughs> you go explain tire. <laughs> but, but in this instance, our evidence abounds. And, and as part of the letter we wrote to INEC, we also chronicled some of those media reports, including some done by other organizations, for instance, Center for Development, Center for Democracy and Development, have chronicled and issued the report. It's chronicling various instances of electoral malpractices in Bielsa. It mentioned, for example, the Center for Dem Democracy and Development that mentioned, it mentioned what PU1, uh, for, for that PU1, what 8, P11, what 1, is Obama local government in Bielsa West. And there are other instances that will be fully good, the ones reported in the media, who vote to INEC. And again, the issue is for INEC to work with law enforcement agencies and investigate. If perhaps the investigation turns out to be false, there will be any prosecution. Of course, I, I don't think that would happen. And if the investigation finds out that there are great more babies against individuals, the prosecution goes out. So this is not about specific individuals. Mm. It, is, it is about incidents, many of them, of electoral malpractices that occurred in these three states. Investigation. Was the INEC must jumpstart that process mm. and ensure that they are prosecuted. For instance, the least INEC can do, or tell the agency that's done, is to say that we've gone to the law enforcement agencies who have grand all the elections and we've collated the number of incidences that they witnessed, arrests that were made, investigations that have done, and we're working with them to make sure that they are prosecuted. And the patch, Nigerians, the people that have been touched, caught on the process of the prosecution. And nothing has been done. And in there are letters to INEC that have also asked questions. Either they have the prosecutions, either they have investigations, and calling on them to make them public. It is, if, if the INEC did not respond to the various issues submitted before them, is why, again, we have to end up in court in this system. And it really is, it's really a sad thing to, uh, to see that such a major stakeholder in the electoral process that should be seen to be doing its best, uh, to be impartial and effective, is really not uh, taking action in this instance. Okay. Um, well, uh, Nigerians have a way of saying, I have the evidence but if i talk nigeria will burn and then they, mm. put, they sit on it and they don't do anything i hope that will not happen here but i have two concerns first of all why only off cycle elections why are they pro or are you satisfied with what INEC has done with the general election because there were still some uh, incidences that needed uh, people to answer for it and we have not heard anything I don't know if you have that information that INEC did something so good that you're comfortable with it so why did you single out only the off cycle election in fact, issues arising from the general elections, they are the subject matter of another litigation at the Federal Court. Two cases, actually. One in the Federal Court Lagos, one in the Federal Court Ambuja. Also, what we have done is similar to this. When we've called upon INEC and submitted the evidence that we have found in the media and from organizations that have done the investigation to INEC to ensure that uh, these uh, uh, incidents are investigated and prosecuted. Uh, so there are, there are two lawsuits in court presently on the general elections. Uh, that is the, the incidents of uh, electoral malpractice that we witnessed then. Calling on Anna to do the same thing we have said they should do now, which they did, they, they did not do. Okay. My second concern, um, which maybe some people will be asking now, I should know better, but let me ask you this question. If these people are prosecuted, of what benefit will it be? For instance, 
if a governor won because of an electoral malpractice and he has already gone to the Supreme Court and he has won mm -hmm. his election, uh, what impact will that have? Is it, is it just to tell the world that this thing happened? Because if there is no use, why go the whole hog? Okay. The issues submitted before the court in the election petition tribunals, they are different from the prosecutory powers of INEC under the Electoral Punish Offenders. And under the election petition tribunals, acts of electoral malpractice forms one of the grounds for whatever the, the, those parties want the courts to find. But it's totally different from the prosecutory powers of INEC. Primarily, the function of that power as inserted in Section 145 of the Electoral Act is to ensure that it sounds as a deterrent to others who may want to take some actions. And they would also constitutionally empower, it would give INEC that much needed credibility. INEC spends a lot of time, and perhaps a lot of resources also, pre-elections and during elections, uh, it's zero tolerance to electoral malpractices. But we've not seen INEC carry out actions after the elections to show that it is against electoral it's not seen that done enough. So, when individuals or those in political offices and are in offices subject to the findings of the electoral petition tribunal or otherwise, it's totally different from the powers of INEC to prosecute individuals for electoral offenses. And these electoral offenses are stated in the electoral act range from what we call as, as, perhaps the petty to the severe. Vote by you, for instance, is the electoral, so electoral offense. Uh, ballot snatches and electoral offense. And perhaps in the plan, which is why even in, 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 the, in the quantum of punishments for these two offenses, the, in the, in the punishments differ. So again, it, it is the power of INEC to do that. It doesn't necessarily affect the outcome of elections. At, at any rate, it would be the election petition tribunal that should determine that. Okay, so now that you're suing INEC, what if um, nothing is being done to prosecute these people? And yeah, we just see it as another cycle and next um, election comes and this is the same thing. Is there any effect that this would have on INEC? Maybe weaken the system or whatever? Just, yeah. It's, 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 it's not really good for our democracy, which is why it's very important to underscore that this suit is not uh, to challenge INEC. It is not to impugn the the credibility or the reputation of INEC. On one hand, it is to strengthen it. Mm -hmm. We are calling on INEC to do what it should do because the law says it should do it. And primarily because it would put INEC out as a competent, effective, impartial, and credible organization, which then is not the last election of INEC. Conduct. There are elections coming in the future, both off cycle elections uh, and even the general elections. So this is what INEC should and can do to show up its credibility and i think you would agree with me that the credibility of INEC is not is not uh, is not high presently best, from what yeah. Nigerians have witnessed over time so really it is an INEC interest not only to do this but to be seen by the people uh, to do this okay well we wish you luck uh, we wish nigeria luck because it's not for you you're not fighting for sarah you're fighting for nigerians and we do hope that INEC becomes or grows to become uh, that impartial judge in our case. I do not know how uh, the ordinary people can also support in the cause that you pursue as a uh, Serap. Just um, what role can the individuals, the citizens of Nigeria play uh, when you're fighting these fights for us as we wrap up? I would say that, in fact, what you are doing presently is one of those credible things which I must uh, uh, praise the organizations and you individuals in the studio for. If you are putting those issues out there for people to understand and then to talk about them. And perhaps if within the context of these conversations, it will bring much more understanding for people that they need to engage the government. And using social media to engage on discussions like this also forms part of that broader strategy for people to contribute. And in those discussions, those who thought perhaps that Serap's action is politically motivated, for instance, would understand this is not about politics. In fact, this is in the interest of INEC. This is not about attacking INEC. So citizens need to understand first before they can engage. And so which side conversations like these are important. People have been educated right now. And people will continue to see the, uh, the part they should play in governance by calling on government and holding the uh, INEC to account. So I would expect that at least that people will continue this conversation. And take various uh, kinds of actions, including on social media, writing to INEC to compel INEC to do what the law says it should do in the interest of INEC and the interest of Nigerians.
Alright, All right, well, we hope that people join the conversation and drive it, and not just for even um, the elections, for every other thing in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. We hope that we're having these conversations and, you know, asking our leaders to do the right thing for the growth of Nigeria. Anyways, I want to thank you. Thank you for joining us. Um, Kala Kala Wale. Kala Wale. <laughs> thank you so much. Very much. All right. So we'll be speaking to Oluwadari Kolawale. He is the deputy director for Serap. Um, we'll go on another quick break, but when we return, we'll be looking at our next hot topic, and you want to stay for that one. See you soon.